Good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome back in to my final edition of Astros Recap in the 2021 season. So obviously, uh, World Series ended a week ago, so here I am a week later. Astros obviously lost the World Series, so I'm not really going to talk much about that. I'll give you a quick recap there and then just sort of go into uh, the off season because, you know, we were already thinking about the offseason halfway through game six <laughs> as the Astros didn't even show up. Uh, but you start thinking about, you know, as reality starts to set in, you start thinking about, you know, uh, what's next for the Astros in the offseason. Free agents, uh, people that we might be looking at, you know, things here and there. Uh, by the way, it is Tuesday, November 9th, 2021, 3.15 p.m., so... Like I said, the Astros lost exactly a week ago today. Uh, game six. So, yeah, it wasn't really an epic series. The Astros were really down and out. Felt like they were playing from behind the entire way. We're hoping for, you know, good fortunes. Game six back home didn't happen. Astros record now in home World Series games all time is three and nine. So, I mean, other than the two wins they had against the uh, Dodgers back in 2017, they really haven't played good baseball at home against the White Sox obviously being swept there. The Nationals losing all four and losing two of three to Atlanta in the six-game series uh, just recently. So, yeah, I mean, the Astros, <laughs> not much to talk about in game six. I mean, they got shut out. Um, they had an opportunity in the first inning to score some runs. So they had first and second nobody out. Couldn't do it there. Max Fried settled in. Luis Garcia gave up the big home run to Soler. And, I mean, from there on, it was just nothing. The Astros really had, didn't even threaten at all to cut into the lead and they were down and out and they basically just fall flat on their face and rolled over and died in game six. That's the disappointing part of the World Series. Now there's always the talk about would you rather lose the game very, very close where you think you have a chance and be more more of a crushing defeat or would you rather lose the way they did where reality set in, you know, an hour and a half, two hours into the game and you knew that you weren't going to win and you just sort of take it. Um... So there's always a discussion there. For me personally, I mean, um, obviously I'm over it. It's a, I, I usually don't dwell on these things too long unless, unless it's a crushing defeat. Um, but yeah, reality set in, and by Wednesday, the next day, I was uh, life goes on. Um, but yeah, you look at the five-year stretch here, obviously, you know, um, The five-year stretch of going to the lead championship series is something that I think is a fun little streak they got going. Um, but again, you walk away, three World Series appearances, one title. It's really not. You wish you had at least pulled out one more World Series. In 19, that was the crushing World Series where you were eight outs away. Um, had the lead there in Game 7. Um, that was a crushing loss, no doubt. Um, and I thought I'd actually take that a little harder than I actually did. I was moved on the next day. So, um, yeah. But as I look to the off season here and, um, you know, things started running through my head as the game was going on, as we got in the late innings and the Astros were down five, six, seven runs, whatever the final score was. Let me just give you the final score here. But Luis Garcia obviously got the start and he... Uh, wasn't very good uh, at all. I just want to look at the five. I'm not even going to go through the pitchers or really give you a recap. The the Braves, just, seven to nothing. Braves beat us down. Garcia gave up the big three-run home run. He got taken out. And then, yeah, things weren't really good after that either. Um, but, I mean, you, you can't win if you can't score. So that was sort of the story there. Um, but as I look in the offseason, obviously Correa is gone. I think this team has a chance to be as good, if not better, than last year. And I want you to hear me out if you think I'm crazy. Correa is going to be gone. I know that. I'm about 99.9% .9 sure he will not be an Astro next year. Um, that doesn't phase me. Obviously, you'd love to have Correa here, but he, he's going to cost too much. And I, if I'm the Astros, I'm not giving him $180 million. They did give him, just recently, like a two, two, three days ago, a qualifying offer which was actually a very reasonable deal for the Astros. I mean, well, not for the Astros, but for Correa. But it's it's five years. It's five, It was five years, $160 million. 
So if he took that deal, he'd actually be making more than Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman make. And let's not sit here and act like with a healthy, with a healthy Alex Bregman and a healthy Altuve that Correa is better than them because he's not. I mean, you can say what you want about postseason baseball, but I mean, in the course of a 162 game season, Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve are better baseball players than Carlos Correa. I think it's just that simple. And you know, Correa, we've we've dealt with you know the injury history there. Obviously, he stayed healthy this year, stayed healthy last year. But again, I mean, Correa is a guy, the, the three years prior to that, he was hurt for a big chunk of the season each of those years. Was it 17, 18, 19? I think in all those years, he was hurt for a good part of the year. So if you sign Correa long term, there's always going to be an injury history or, you know, a possibility for that. Um, but yeah, he's going to get paid. Some some team's going to give him, you know, eight, nine, ten, ten years. I don't know what they give him, but it's going to be sort of, I'm probably guessing the range of George Springer. Springer went to Toronto, not the exact numbers, but I think he got eight years and like $180 million, something like that. Correa's probably going to be looking for even more than that, but he ain't worth it. And the free agent class of shortstops, uh, it's pretty nice out there. I think the Astros can get a deal done with somebody else, like a Marcus Simeon, possibly a Trevor Story. Tre- Trevor Story is the, the, the big name out there. I think the Astros will be looking to get. But, you know, Javier Baez is out there. I don't know if Baez is a great fit. I don't know if they like his sort of... I mean, I'd be fine with Baez, obviously. He's a great player. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see how things shake out. But, you know, James Click, on the other hand, yeah. I mean, he's only been here since, you know, what, 2020. In 2020, there wasn't... In 2020, there wasn't, you know, like, um, a trade deadline to speak of or a whole lot of moves actually made by James Click. So I couldn't judge him that year. My face is, like, red on this side, isn't it? (laughs) All right. Anyway, yeah. Um, 2021 was sort of the year where we were going to judge James Click a little bit. But I, I I like what he did at the deadline. He obviously the big need was the bullpen. He got your four arms. I mean, when I was when we were getting close to the deadline, you know, you wanted definitely bullpen help. Uh, you preferably wanted two guys, but I felt like at the end of the day, a James Click would be able to pull off one guy, and he got your four guys. Uh, obviously, you know, the big trade, the start, the Kendall Graveman and Rafael Montero. Montero didn't pitch long. Um, uh, he got hurt and was out the rest of the year. So I don't know what the contract status of either of those two are. I don't think Raven signed, so they wouldn't have to go out and sign him if they want to keep him around. Uh, obviously, then uh, Yimi Garcia <clears throat> uh, came over, and then it was Phil Maton on the trade deadline day. So you got your four guys, and three of those guys were huge in the postseason. Phil Maton, Yimi Garcia, and Kendall Graven all pitched pretty well. Uh, Yimi did struggle a little bit against the White Sox in that first series, but didn't cost him too bad. Uh, but Maton was fantastic, and so was Kendall Raven. So, uh, yeah, that was that was big. Stanek, I don't know if Stanek signed. I think Maton is. I think Maton will be here uh, next year. But I don't know the contract status, but a lot of our bullpen pitchers. I would imagine Ryan Presley will still be here. But, again, I don't know a lot of, a lot of uh, status on any of our relievers, so we'll just wait and see there. Obviously, uh, like I just said, Correa will be gone. Zach Granke will be gone. Um, but, they yeah, they gave Correa and Verlander qualifying offers. Uh, you know, so, that, you know, I don't know the offer uh, Verlander got, but Correa, I could be off on a few. Well, it's It's in the realm of 160 over five years, I think, is what they gave him. But you have to make those offers, so if they reject, you get that compensation pick. So that's why you make those offers, even if you don't think it's going to work. I do think that they want to try um, hard to get Verlander back. Would be my guess. I, I think Ver. I don't know what he's got left in the tank. He's like 39 years old, but I don't know. I mean, there's there's a decent uh, you know market of free agent pitchers as well. So. 
But yeah, it's just a waiting game to see what actually shakes out. But you know, James Click did did do a good job at the deadline. I like what he's done so far. Uh, small sample size, of course. Uh, to compare him to Jeff Luno is almost unfair. Um, but yeah, I mean, J- Jim Crane made the decision to move on, which I will sit here and never agree with. But I mean, AJ Hinch, the managers are a dime a dozen. I mean, they're, they're I mean. They're basically, I mean, they, it's not that hard if you have a loaded team to, to, to build a winner uh, for a manager. But a GM who's the brains behind the entire roster, builds your roster, is super important. And I don't think that it was right to jump away or fire um, Jeff Luno. But we have to live with the, uh, the reality. Reality is James Click is your GM, and now uh, the roster and the team is in his hands. So, But he did a good job at the deadline. I mean, you know, they wanted to go after um, Scherzer, but that wasn't going to happen in a million years. The Astros don't have the farm system to make those deals come true. Uh, Free agent-wise, which is a decent class this year, I think we can make a splash on some people, especially if you're not paying Correa. You're going to have a lot of uh, money to use. uh, Granke's coming off the books. He's gone. He made a lot of money. So you have do you you have enough cap space to, to to get some deals done, and let's also keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. The Astros were in danger of going other, over the luxury tax during the t- trade deadline, which they could have done. Uh, I don't know that this, the penalty's not. There's a penalty if you actually exceed the luxury tax, but it's not a severe penalty. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but James Cook stayed under it. So he not only required three relievers for you, but he stayed under the luxury tax, which is big. I guess. <laughs> but they would have gone over it if they had to. So anyway, but yeah, they're under the luxury tax. Cap space is open. Uh, I mean, yeah, the team's still going to be good. Um, but yeah, Correa's not returning. So let's just get that, you know, I think Astros fans need to understand that he's not, he's not coming back. Let him go. Or same situation as George Springer, same situation as Garrett Cole. They're not coming back. He's not coming back. Like I said, 99.9% sure he will not be an Astro next year. So go out there, sign a shortstop. Try to get Granky if you can. Also would be nice to sign another starting pitcher, a guy that can you know be a two at least, two, three at worst. We'll see what we get at Lance McCullers. You have still Luis Garcia. Christian Javier can go back in the rotation if need be. Um, Jose Arquiti needs to stay healthy for a full season. Um, trying to think who else, really. We'll see what... I, I don't have a lot of faith in Framber Valdez. We'll see what, what they can work out with him, but that's what you're looking at staff-wise. Um, but, yeah, it's an interesting offseason, and, you know, even though this is my last, uh, you know, my last recap of this year, most likely, I'd like to jump in middle of uh, probably sometime in January, maybe, after the winter meetings. Usually deals go down around then. Um, but when the Astros have some signings and, you know, some deals through, made, done, deals, I like to get on and sort of analyze them. also like to get on in spring training at some point to sort of go through just, you know, the roster and how things are shaking out. But I do believe this team can be as good and if James Click makes a few moves better than last year. Um, I mean, you're losing Correa, but, I mean, he's not a guy you're going to overspend for. I just don't see it. Um, I mean, they might stretch it to six, seven years if they're really interested in trying to keep him. I just I, I don't see it. I think five years, 160, $160 million is the best you can do for him. So uh, if he doesn't like it, so be it. Move on. Go find you know your money elsewhere. So... That's where we're at. I'm trying to think, you know, bullpen. Presley is a fine closer. I have no problem with Ryan Presley. You'll have Maton. We'll see what version. Do we get playoff Maton for next year? Or do we get regular season Maton? Because there was a big difference between the two there. Maton in the playoffs was phenomenal. Regular season, he was very vulnerable. So we'll see uh, what Phil Maton we get. If they can sign Kendall Graveman, which we would like to do. Ryan Stanek's on a year-to-year thing. They did get Dusty Baker back.
that's been the only thing they've done so far. I mean, on a one-year deal, this was you know I, I criticized Dusty a lot throughout the year. Did a good job in the postseason. I do want to sit here and you know if you're gonna tear Dusty down when he makes bad decisions, you also need to give him some credit when he does a good job. And the maneuvering of the bullpen in the playoffs, he did a good job. I will give Dusty credit there. So it just bothers me during the regular season when you have better options and you choose not to go to those better options. Uh, you know, my my manager critique is always uh, basically when it comes to bullpen and uh, the guys you pick out of that bullpen to you know, protect a lead or keep a lead or keep any game close. And when you're not using your best guys, you know, you like to win every game. So it uh, bothers me sometimes with some of the decisions Dusty made, but I will give him credit because he did a good job postseason, and it was not easy. Because a lot of our starters would go three innings if you were lucky. A lot of them didn't even go that far. And then you had to use your bullpen for six innings and figure out mix and match and who you're going to use here, here, there, here and there. And, and Dusty, every move he made looked like it was the right one. So I will give him credit in that regard. Uh, again, I'm still a proponent for Joe Espada. I'd love him to, to, to be the, the manager of this team. Um, he's been our bench coach since 2018. I feel like he's got you know a, a, a great opportunity here, but they're going to stick with Dusty. Joe Espada might get a managerial spot somewhere else, so that's the danger of not promoting him. But I feel like you know he's a great guy. I feel like you know he knows his team as well as anybody, and he'd do the same job Dusty would. But yeah, we move on and and we'll see. But uh, again, just a whole lot of thoughts. Not nothing done yet. Um, uh, Martin Maldonado got signed regular season. He'll be back next year. Gurriel, they picked up his contract. He'll be back. Of course, Altuve, uh, Correa's gone. Altuve's still there. Bregman's still up third. Brantley's got another year in his contract. Don't know. They might go for an outfielder. That would be a nice addition because you sort of platooning center field with Chaz McCormick, Jose Siri, and, and, uh, and Jake Myers. So I don't know if they see one of those guys emerging as the everyday guy. Uh, obviously, Kyle Tucker's your guy in right field. He's still on his rookie deal, along with Jordan Alvarez. Hey, Tucker and Alvarez are the guys you'll be looking to sign. One of those two probably long-term in the near future. But I think they're both still on their rookie deals, so you're you're getting them for super cheap right now. But, yeah, what do they decide to do in center field is the question. I mean, I'm not a huge Chaz McCormick guy. He's okay. Uh, I do like Jake Myers, rookie. He's got a chance to make it, I think. Jose Siri has got a chance to make it, I think. So they might just work out those three guys and the two best will, will you know, make, make, make the roster or whatever it is. So we'll see. But um, that's an, a, an idea. If you can find a, you know, reliable outfielder that can hit, you know, well enough where you can plug them in or if they just keep the three they got, hopefully one emerges as the top guy. But yeah, starting pitcher, bullpen arm is always on the table. Um, seeing if you can get at least Verlander back, an outfield bat. Those are the three uh, needs I, I sort of look for. So, well, actually four needs, because you need a shortstop or somebody on the left side of the infield, obviously. So you need that. You need, you, you need a starter, obviously. If you can't get Verlander back, you need to look for an A somewhere. Like a Robbie Ray or a Noah Syndergaard, those are options. Um, an outfield bat and a bullpen arm. If you can address those four things, I would like our chances going into next year. So, yeah, we're coming up on 19 minutes. Don't have much more to add. The World Series, again, ended in six games. And the Astros just yet. Yeah, my recap of the World Series. Well, really, I look at one key game. If you want to wrap up this World Series in the shortest... Uh, I can give you a short version here. Game three. Game three where they had to lead 2-0. Should have been more like 5 nothing if they capitalized on some opportunities. But you had to lead, and you, 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 you gave it up. And that was really the big game, I feel like. If the Ashes could have taken game three and came, came back home up three games to two, I would have liked their chances. But they didn't do so. And, yeah, I uh, look at game three as a big one. I look back at things. But in the game six, yeah, I just... Didn't show up. It's that simple. That plain and simple. 
they just rolled over and died, basically. So, anyway, yeah, wrap things up there. Talk to you in January at some point, and we'll look forward to next year. But I, I do like the Astros' chances to continue their stretch to win this division. I mean, your competition next year is probably Seattle, right? I mean, I'm never going to count on Oakland because Oakland always seems to be a team that finds himself right in the playoff chase. So, but the Angels, I'll believe it when I see it, and the Rangers are just dreadful. So, yeah. Um, but Seattle's on the upcome, and they may be looking to sign some guys, get some pitchers, and, you know, they, I mean, they won, what, 90 games last year, and they were right there at the end or somewhere close to that. So, but yeah, I'll wrap things up there. We'll talk to you in January.